Welcome, welcome everybody. This is no bullshit gaming podcast. Two and a half gamers session number three. Session number three. So we are definitely taking this seriously. Well, we are dis- discussing the latest news, fun stuff, and then obviously dropping some knowledge as well. But uh, you know, don't forget this is also 4 a.m. conference discussion feeling about the gaming industry. So let's dive in. Welcome, guys, Felix and Jakub. Hello there. How was your week? Very, very good. It's a lot of happening. We'll get into it. I got a lot of questions this week from some devs uh, about one particular ad unit. I'll go into that a bit later. Oh, but nice. before we kind of just dive into it, I just wanted to make a announcement in the spirit of self-improvement. So it was brought to my <laughs> attention by my two dear co-hosts uh, last week that I use a lot of fillers. And in the spirit of self-improvement, uh, I will now, uh, or we all, will donate we one all. euro per filler uh, every week to a charity uh, of our listeners choosing. And we're gonna have a little poll on LinkedIn after this podcast comes out to choose it. So uh, we're gonna be counting fillers from now on. Very good. Well, don't worry, I will definitely be counting it. And that was the one. That was the one already. Yep, got it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Tick. Okay, and uh, and you know, uh, you wanted to do a quick round of intros again because you feel a bit intimidated that uh, nobody knows you, Felix. So please, can you just introduce yourself as well and the Jakub as well, and then I'm going to tell uh, our listeners about myself too. Yeah, sure. So I'm Felix. I'm the director of ad monetization at Networking. I have worked at DSPs and ad networks before. So anything that has to do with in-game ad monetization, I've seen how the sausage is made, and I've also made the sausage. Ooh. Oh, nice. Mm. Mm. That's nice. Uh, so name's Jacob, or you can hear it in the conversation also, Remo. Uh, pretty much head of monetization at Traplight currently, but more on the game design stuff. Uh, the jobs that I did before was, I guess, eighty percent game design, and currently, yeah, lots of projects are pretty much coming through my hands, so that's there. But uh, mostly focused on game design, system design, and all the nitty gritty uh, parts of monetization that are pretty much tying to the game economy, which is, of course, today's trend fa- fa- favorite subject. <laughs> ah, amazing. And my name is Mate, and I'm an independent UA consultant working in games for nine years already. Now having a team of uh, motion designers, 10 uh, at the moment. And I work very closely with the several developers al- around the world to grow their games. That's it. And uh, guys, welcome again. So let's, uh, let's dive into the news. So what's happening? Not many acquisitions this this week. <laughs> it's weird. No, I know, it's I know right? It's like <laughs> week. Nobody bought anyone, or maybe there is some uh, M and A, but not that huge as the, the week before. Well, yeah, we'll 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 definitely see some more acquisitions later down the line. I can I can guess that this will be happening this year. Why Why are you so sad about it? like oh, well, we are going to see well, i'm not sad about <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's how this industry <laughs> works it's it's just expected like we talked about it before that we are guessing that ea is the next company to be acquired on the chopping block or playrix those two or playrix yeah or player or someone yeah. else yeah yeah let's let's start with the news i guess uh, yeah. so we're looking at some of the blizzard related news lately uh, so there's this historic uh, start of the game industry union in North America. I think one of the first ones that actually going to be within a re- really big company, uh, specifically Activision Blizzard, where uh, QA workers are trying to establish it uh, within Raven Software. And uh, originally th- they pretty much said that they will give Blizzard until 25th of January, which already passed out, and Blizzard did not voluntarily choose to recognize, uh, Activision Blizzard didn't voluntarily choose to recognize the union. So now I get... What a surprise. It is in workers' workers' hands, because uh, if they can sway a lot of 
uh, people on their side, they still need to be uh, recognized as a union, as like um, Activision Blizzard needs to start bargaining with them, if I understood the whole report correctly. But on top of it, uh, there was the sudden change within the organization in the mentioned company where QA people were uh, pretty much put around all of their teams and not within a QA team just by accident. But you, you need to, you need to mention that the QA of Call of Duty team that was the yeah yeah uh, QA of Call of Duty like the main team that uh, they wanted to form thirty four people. And what happened? Well, now they are uh, definitely sitting with uh, other teams, just not to be together, trying to create a union. <laughs> well. Not surprised again. I think I saw it in even uh, like the GDC survey from this year that there's like 60% or 55% developers uh, wanting to get the game industry union established. So this this number is just rising every year pretty much. Yeah, but it's GDC survey, so, you know. A little bit biased. Uh, <laughs> slightly, di yeah, slightly different from the, the mobile game dev industry anyway. And the, the GDC uh, audience is quite, well indie, PC, and uh, in that direction, rather than mobile developers. This kind of just also piles on what we've been saying before, like how bad are things in there? Because traditionally, if you think about it, forming a union is traditionally at least like a blue collar thing. And Blizzard QA, that's definitely like, I would say more of a white collar job. And like for them to have to actually want to group together in a tech company that generally is known for getting, you know, the cushy lunches and the good deals. Like what is going on in there? Like it must be so bad. Like what? Well, there was the, um, the post from, uh, from Jessica QA, which we mentioned, I think in the first uh, session, they're earning 60 K a year, which is, I think really low salary for, um, North America. You know, you can can you imagine like having that kind of uh, salary in, let's say, San Francisco? Are they in San Francisco though, or are they like in some other city? Well, not probably in San Francisco. Blizzard uh, specifically is it Ir Irvine, California? Yeah. Okay. There you go. But still, um, how, how much you pay for uh, for rent? I think this has to do with uh, this kind of a hidden tax that's kind of plaguing the gaming industry where you are expected to be paid less because you're working on a thing that's your dream job. And this is kind of a really bad mantra that I think needs to definitely go away because it's just the worst, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, but still, uh, I would also take uh, a pay cut to work on uh, on Diablo, for example, but not for a long <laughs> period of time. Just, uh, you know, just for a year, maybe two years tops and then just move on. Because, well, I you can definitely get better salary elsewhere and you still enjoy working. That's the thing. You need to be happy to be able to uh, work uh, in gaming industry, right? Or, well, working in gaming industry definitely makes me happy. So, and that's the, that's the main point. Yeah, but, you know, now that there's like much more competition even with in the market of like the job market of Northern America that I think like everybody gets better and these kind of problems that are or, or let's say the the companies that were built originally on this thesis are kind of suffering from this now which is now that you see these movements like let's establish a union now yeah well Sure. Let's see what happens when Microsoft comes in there and cleans up. Like, say what you want about mm -hmm. Microsoft, but they're known for, you know, cleaning having up, a good, having a good <laughs> HR system. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. All right, let's uh, let's move on. So, I want to talk about something that I've actually gotten four questions from from four different devs this week. Nice. And that is rewarded interstitial ads. And the reason, I don't know, have you guys heard about these rewarded interstitial ads? Uh, well, a couple of months ago, the, the rewarded interstitial ads will be available on Google, I think. But that's it. I mean, no other information. Yeah, so exactly right. So six months ago, Google and Facebook announced that they're going to roll out rewarded interstitial ads. So it's an interstitial ad that pops up and then users can opt out of the interstitial ad five seconds mm -hmm. into it and then forego the reward or stay watch the ad for 30 seconds and then get the reward. So 
AdMob right now is pushing super hard for this format because it's still in beta, which in Google is, you know, yeah. it means it's on not a very strong footing. But they're pushing yeah. super hard, and I think that's why I got so many questions from devs this week about it. And they also pitched me quite a lot. Facebook used to push it, but not as much anymore, which is pretty much a sign that they're kind of abandoning it. And here's my little mini rant. Like, whatever you do, if you're a dev, don't monetize with this format. Like, you're opening <laughs> yourself up to such like unnecessary risk and such unnecessary stress by using this format. So when you're using interstitial ads, banners, or rewarded in mobile, you're always using a mediator, which means you always get price because there's competition. But for this reward interstitial ad, ads, there's only AdMob and Facebook that actually support this mm -hmm. format, which means you're going into a duopoly. And we all know that on iOS, Facebook is pretty much a non-existent player at the moment. So which means that for <laughs> iOS, you will be entirely reliant on AdMob to pay you the highest price, which I guarantee you they won't. Like I can see yeah, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, absolutely not. And I, I've seen it like when you have one ad network and then you add mediation, you double ad revenue all the time. So pretty much yeah. you're accepting 50% lower ECPMs if you use this format. And I guarantee you that AdMob are pushing super hard for this right now because no one is using it and they're trying to do a last hurrah to push it. And I will bet that this time in a year from now, they're going to sunset this project in a really short time frame. And then if you have, if you're monetizing with it, you're going to have to change your game and you're going to hold the bag on this. <laughs> Don't like it. <laughs> do, do I get this right? So this is something in between the spectrum of interstitial and rewarded video where interstitial you don't control at all as a player. It just pops up to your face and that's it. You, yeah. you exit or click it. And rewarded video you voluntarily choose to watch because there was a reward offered to you before. So here, yeah. the thing pops up. This is a hybrid. Yeah. You, so, you need to watch it for five seconds anyway. You cannot close it. Yeah. And then the reward is shown for you to continue watching? Yeah. So I guarantee you there is some genius product manager in like AdMob or Google that's been like, oh yeah, I can improve completion rates on our interstitial ads. <laughs> and that's why it's added this reward. And when I spoke to AdBob two months ago, I was asking, okay, so do I get rewarded ad ECPMs for this? And they're like, no, 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 same as interstitial. <laughs> And I'm like, so why should I use interstitial? Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, because you improve completion rates. I'm just like, what? Hey, yeah. Like, <laughs> now's the catch I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, how's that relevant? Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Nice, but okay. Yeah, that's my little mini rant. It's just gone a lot of questions I... over it lately. But until the only way I would say you should use this is if you're a developer is if you see this coming on like more mediation so you get more competition because that's the only way that you as a developer can guarantee you actually get paid the highest or a fair price for your inventory so if you're only getting Google and Facebook it's not going to be as high as it would if you're selling it on open mediation marketplace this is very similar to actually pre-registration campaigns with Google. I mean, this is so useless. I mean, yeah, I have no idea like why every rep out there, or almost every rep is pushing it so hard, you know, just to spend money on pre-reg campaigns. You can't optimize it properly. So it's like, you know, giving flyers uh, in uh, San Francisco Metro. That would be more effective, I would say. <laughs> this, this is not even like, install optimization is like pre-reg so nobody cares so uh, you will pay the same cpi sometimes even higher cpis than mai campaigns so mobile app install campaigns so like how, how does that make sense <laughs> i have no idea really but yeah oh. okay so the lesson for me as a game designer is just you know either use interstitials or rewarded videos but this doesn't seem to fit in any like even for me like how do i slot in the reward there in the actual ad which is game related then yeah that's why it's so silly because you have to design around this new ad unit and make it a bit different from the rewarded and that might actually cannibalize your rewarded video as well so it's just uh, it's just bad idea okay. like, I, I don't see any good ideas about it right now like i don't yeah well that's why nobody's using it <laughs> i guess 
<laughs> That's why they're pushing it so hard now. It's very similar to uh, good old days with, I think, carousel ads on Facebook. Mm. Facebook at some point in the past was pushing it so hard, like, yeah, yeah, use it, use it for gaming. It's amazing ad unit. So we're using it, obviously, no performance, anything. And then after a while, I mean, it can work sometimes. But it's really good and suitable for e-commerce brands, obviously, because you can show the, the different products in the, in the carousel uh, ad format. For gaming, not at all. Sometimes you can show up uh, different characters and units, yes, but that's, uh, that's it. So then when I asked uh, Facebook about it again after a couple of months of their pushing it, like, hey, okay, so should we use Carousel? No, 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 no. That's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not very effective. Like, oh, well, really? Who, who would say? <laughs> what a surprise. Uh, the same thing, with, yeah, I think it was with, uh, with Canvas uh, experience, but I can't remember how was it called. Because kind of well, it was Canvas, but it can be confused with the Facebook Canvas, where which was the platform for the games ten years ago. Yeah, but never. I mean, nevertheless, you said it worked some cases. When did actually the carousel ads work for gaming? When you show uh, different characters and units from the game, actually. So like more so, hardcore uh, games, then I guess. More probably, yeah, more midcore and hardcore. So if you use the um, or heroes, all you have. Uh, that's perfect. But then years ago, um, they're pushing it so hard to create a story in five images. So you have the, the carousel and then uh, every image is uh, one part of the story. So you're just flashing the store page images pretty much. I need to take, no. yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, we can, we can move on. Uh, we can move on. Uh, I, I need to stop ranting about Facebook because my um, personal account is still banned, but it should be unbanned on Monday. So uh, should be hope <laughs> should be. Yeah, should be. I was on the on the support with uh, so many people already. No one can or could help me. So uh, Facebook, you're doing a very good job. Thank you very much for being such a great UA. Did, uh, did, if you spent more money, would they be more helpful, you think? Are you like, are you stuck in some Dude, kind of mid tier or like, how does it, yeah. I spent, uh, 25 million in my whole career. I think that's a pretty good amount of money to not being banned. But is it all in, is it all in your Facebook account though? Okay. That's not, yeah, there we go. True. There we go. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But Facebook was always 80% of the spend up until now, up <laughs> until now. So maybe that that's the case because I lowered the spend on Facebook and they, they banned me. <laughs> Hey, you, you asshole, come back and spend more money. But this is not, this is definitely not yeah, uh, how continue. they can motivate let's me. Continue. Okay, let's continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so Blizzard is making a survival game. Uh, I think uh, they are inspired by their own um, survival. <laughs> atmosphere and the situation and the sur survival mode they are in at the moment. Uh, but jokes aside, they're working on a new brand, a uh, new, um, in a whole new universe, so whatever that means. Uh, it's a new AAA title, and, uh, and it's not a spin-off on the existing Blizzard game, but a new IP. So this is new. <laughs> that's that's interesting. It's, it's first time in eight years, I think. Was was it? Yeah. Said? Yeah. Well, the Overwatch was the the last one, right? Yeah, but also keep in mind that Overwatch wasn't really a new IP, where Overwatch was built on the ashes of the Project Titan MMO. So. Like considering that the new IP was in the making, like far behind. So, yeah. so I would say this is really surprising development, uh, considering that the current situation at Blizzard is. Uh, well, I, what else they can do? I mean, you, sound, you sound as about as excited as a chess player. You don't sound excited <laughs> at all. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Yaku, because I know we, when this thing will come out, it will come out like 2028. 2042. <laughs> Mike, mark, mark my words. At, Definitely there. At least we'll finally get a litmus test if Remo is correct about like how the brain drain like has affected Blizzard yeah. and actually see if this will be a flop or not. That will be a true test if Remo is correct or not. You remember? Yeah, but we will see. We will see in ten years. You remember yeah. how many? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many years uh, it took from the first trailer of announcement of a cyberpunk? Oh. Uh, yeah, that was around eight years. <laughs> okay, but well, that's uh, that's well, not Blizzard. So with Blizzard, 
That's even longer. <laughs> that's, the <laughs> that's, the that's the problem. That's the problem. Okay, okay, that's your point. Okay, fine. Yeah, but it's interesting well. because uh, still not a mobile undertaking because the rumor on the street, of course, was that Blizzard was working on some kind of World of Warcraft or Warcraft IP spin-off into geolocation, like Pokemon Go game. Ugh. So that that's what I heard. But yeah, we we are not getting it, it seems. At least it's not we being announced. Apparently you are walking on a very wrong street if this is something <laughs> that you <laughs> heard as a rumor on the street. Oh we'll see. Well, you, well, you are walking in, uh, in the street of Slovakia, so I, now I get it. <laughs> now I get it. Now I get it. Okay. Yeah, let's continue. Uh, okay, sure. Staying on the Blizzard note, uh, there's the new uh, game publishing studio called New Tales, launched by former Ubisoft and Blizzard veterans in Paris. Uh, I think lots of experience coming from the AAA industry there, uh, such as Vivendi, LucasArts, Blizzard and Ubisoft. And they are planning to develop games with its internal studios as well as publish as well as publish games from other developers so it's not per se the typical blizzard developers banding together to create a new game rather than this seems like a bigger venture yeah but this is this is what i don't get um a publishing uh seems like a triple a games i mean there is like literally zero people from mobile gaming industry so i have no idea how they can oh well I well, I know how they can, but no idea how they will just do the publishing. Oh, well, we'll see, I guess. Yeah, it's interesting. Also, the other fact is interesting. I didn't see any big uh, dollar numbers attached to this report. Like, uh, we raised Not this, yet. we have Not this, yet. we have that. So in the current environment, that's usually the the thing that you see there. But yeah, let's see. Wishing all the best, I guess. More More PC console games, I guess, coming. Ooh, can't wait, can't wait. Okay, continuing next, uh, yeah, this one's interesting. So YouTube head of gaming uh, is leaving for a crypto company called Polygon. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Wish him all the best, wish him all the best. I mean, this is kind of just a bit, you know, now as all the VC money is going into crypto and then it's becoming the cool thing for, you know, the hip cool managers of San Francisco to be doing. It's just kind of, you know, these successful executives following the money and following the hype, right? Yeah. yeah but do I get it right that this is not, uh, Polygon's not the company that actually makes him, it's the protocol on Ethereum, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So... So what 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 would be the role? Still follows the money. What would be the Still role here? The money. Like, uh, Come on, he went from uh, being head of gaming at YouTube to being the CEO. That's a step up. Like, no, no, yeah. I, I didn't, no, 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 CEO. CEO. Uh, no CEO. He's just joining the the, the company. Joining the company. Ah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, if he's the CEO, that would be <laughs> definitely a, a big step. Don't up think so. Of of the game, but yeah, no, no, no it's not a oh, not okay. CEO. Yeah, and then the other other bit of the news is that YouTube CEO said that NFTs and crypto present the previously unimaginable opportunity without any other specific product or deadline details. Yeah, that's maybe because they have no imagination. That's the thing. Also, uh, of course, it's unimaginable because two years ago, like NFTs didn't even exist. So yeah, of course it was exactly. unimaginable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, they saw the Twitter is, uh, is having their, um, well, Twitter blue subscription with uh, the NFT avatars in the profile picture. So now everything is. Uh, but but wouldn't this be like the biggest credential behind NFTs if YouTube would be going into it? I, I could see I could see YouTube making an open sea and letting creators also sell NFTs on YouTube to their fans and then like an taking a nice little people. healthy like taking a nice little slice from it. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, there is also rumor on the street that, uh, you know, maybe Slovakian street, I don't know, uh, that uh, <laughs> the Instagram, Instagram is kind of working or thinking about a uh, very similar thing about NFTs. Oh, really? And what, Social yeah. networks about pictures. <laughs> Ooh, who would say, who would say that, on right? the bandwagon about <laughs> overpriced pictures. <laughs> yeah. Well, that could make sense. We'll see. Yeah. 
We'll see. But finally, something about uh, the mobile developers, which is Tilting Point is bringing mobile games to PC, Mac, and browser. So they are launching their uh, Tilting Point launcher. <laughs> so releasing the launcher, enabling games from its mobile portfolio to launch them on PC and Mac and uh, and browser, uh, obviously. And they are partnering with Ixola, hey, to be able to offer uh, cross-platform compatibility options as well. So um, they think that the launcher will enable games to reach new markets um, with you know, uh, new ways of distribution, which can be true. Uh, but, you know, we see the Raid Shadow Legends, Hero Wars and, and other games being on uh, a web client. Um, and I'm seeing those ads quite uh, often on Facebook and, and Google as well. So this is a uh, well, I would say a pretty good um, activity. Yeah, I mean, I, I downloaded it yesterday actually and tried it, uh, the Tilting Point one. Really? It worked really well. Like, I'm quite impressed. I could see it as being like a really good thing from me as a player perspective. Uh, like the titles where you want to have a bigger screen. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was quite cool. How many games do they have there? Like a couple right now, but they're putting more and more. It's like not more than three, four, but they're going to be more and more adding on later. But I think... After speaking to our friend Nick Sola, what they said is that this can make you reach about 260 million more players. Really? Yeah. Nice. So if that's okay. if that's true, that's actually quite. Where, you know, where did yeah. where, where did this where did come number from? came from? So yeah. what, <laughs> what, 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 what what our friend Nick Sola said was that essentially, mm, like about 200 million of them are in China that you're able to reach, and then there's more in Russia, Japan, South Korea. Uh, things like that, but together it adds up to 260 million more players. And I guess if you already have a game that's plateaued on, like, from a UA perspective, mm-hmm. there's no more growth to kind of get on the normal channels. I guess this is kind of a. Well, let, let me get this straight. Like, you are able to reach means what? That they have installed Tilting Point's newest launcher? What do you mean? Like. Like is uh, is he talking about just total addressable market or like where's this now? Uh, Tam, it's from? a Tam, it's the Tam. I, so yeah, yeah, it's a Tam. It's not yeah. Because I I was comparing it to something like you know Blue Stacks for instance has around I don't know four hundred million install base or something like that that then it would make sense but yeah. <laughs> That's your answer. Okay, I have heard by the way well, a crypto angle on this that they're just preparing to get like cross platform for ooh. these games here through this. Ooh. Who is preparing? Tilting point. Xola or Tilting, Tilting point. point. Oh, okay. Do you guys think this well, could be a, a way as well to avoid some Apple payments? Mm. Mm. Not sure. M- most probably not that much. I mean, uh, obviously you can get uh, different payment meth- methods on PC uh, and Mac and Web, but still. You still want to make the games mobile first. Yeah, exactly. Because of the scale. I mean, this is definitely a nice uh, addition to the uh, growth pool or um, player pool as well, but it's uh, it's still PC, web, and Mac. I mean, the, the, that inventory is shrinking every day. Every minute that we speak at the moment, the inventory is shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> it has been happening since, what, like 2015 already. Yep. Well, well, you mentioned Apple, and uh, guess what? Apple was f- <laughs> fine with... <laughs> 5.6 million for not complying with the Dutch uh, dating app uh, order. Oh, what a nice surprise. I mean, uh, the the news about uh, Apple enabling, um, I don't know like, why Netherlands and why dating apps uh, to use, uh, enabling to use the, the third party payment solutions, but it was just out for what week and now the <laughs> They're fine with 5.6 million for not complaining. Guys, like <laughs> amazing. And this I looked cumulates, it up. by the way. Like yeah. it's it's per week, so it can accumulate up to 50 oh, yeah, million. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fines will fines will continue to be assessed by uh, at five million euros per week up to maximum of fifty million euros until Apple complies. Guys, like guys, this is <laughs> no, I looked it up. This is not even a slap on the wrist. This is a big fat nothing burger from Apple. In the fiscal year of 2021, Apple made $366 billion worth of revenue. Yeah. That's a billion a day. So even assuming that maybe half a yeah. percent of that comes from the Netherlands, 
that's like five million and that's every yeah, day like yeah, it's yeah. it's a rounding error it, it's not even a slap on the wrist they can keep doing that it doesn't it's the cost of doing business like i know no, like that that's understandable yeah. but the yeah. real question is here you know if like you have 20 different states slapping you on the wrist and count it up then it will become a problem yeah but you know until that happens they will keep doing it yeah that's they the will. thing that's the thing because it, yeah it's, it doesn't make any sense to to do anything but if you know I, i'm a re since re it's re regulator agency like this is pretty much free money so I, i'll go after it if i'm you know sitting in a neighboring country why would i not do that also good time to be a government <laughs> yeah uh, well <laughs> oof oof and there is one last piece of news um which is um my soft launch article how to soft launch your game in 2022 was just published on mobiledevmemo.com so thank you very much eric for publishing it please go there read it it's the you know the best guide guide there <laughs> shameless plug for all of you <laughs> shameless plug shameless plug now you should definitely read it share it as as much as you can because i really believe this can help a lot of developers out there just to get into the soft launch um quickly to know what they're doing and uh, yeah please share any feedback you might have and now now we have the main topic of the day which is the evil behind roblox <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. I would say I it love is the it. facts yeah, behind Roblox where you can then, yeah, okay, sure, sure, sure. then you can consider what is evil. <laughs> yeah, if it's evil or not. Well, definitely they're making a lot of money, so let's see. Yeah. Uh so to to frame these like there were these two big videos that were running around the internet, one uh done in August, second one done in December. Uh forgot the name. I think People Play Games was the channel. I think so. Don't, Doesn't don't, don't remember, but yeah, we can link that. But basically, they did a really uh, thorough research on the on the whole topic. So I'm taking some of the facts from there and some of the things from around uh, the community. Uh, of course, it can be said that it's really biased on their side because they're just really critical. But I have also heard some of the other arguments there, especially from just direct Roblox only developers. So mm -hmm. let's let's assess that. Let's say. So let's start let's with see. some of the just basic facts, which are just facts. So if we compare the whole Roblox platform, uh, it hosts around 20 million of experiences. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. get to that uh, in of a little course. bit. Not Sounds like Airbnb. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then if you compare it, for instance, with something like Steam, Steam hosts like 55k games. Just just to get get the grasp of how big it is. Uh, in order to publish a game on Steam, I think you need to pay some kind of arbitrary fee, so it's not that easy. Uh, in Roblox, I would guess it just it is just free, just like normal registration setup, but no money involved if I get it right. You need to pay also on Apple and, uh, and Google, yeah, yeah. like 100, so. 100 euros per year, I think. Yeah, so that's that's as for the scale. The important word in this whole s like setup is the word experience. Because Roblox, even though it is sitting on number one in the top grossing charts, uh, is pretty much blatantly breaching the guideline of store within a store just by avoiding it by renaming their games into experiences. So now it's compliant with the guidelines, which is no. number one fact that people don't know. <laughs> no, that's the thing. Uh, I still believe this uh, idea was pitched by Apple to Roblox. Like, hey, guys, you know, you're making a lot of money on our platform, but... We know, would be we really very sad to, to force yeah, you down. We can't, have, <laughs> we can't have marketplace or, like, uh, multiple games within the app in our store. So, you know, if you, if you just rename the games to experiences, that might work. <laughs> and... You will be happy, and we will be happy as well. I just think it's a legal <laughs> eagle. I don't think it's Apple. I think it's some legal genius inside of Roblox. Oh, my, it's like, my, guys, my. I've got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got it. They're not <laughs> games. They're experiences. I, do, I don't think that this legal eagle will work for anyone else if you're not <laughs> called Roblox. <laughs> well, of course, if you have uh, 47 million DAUs, then, you know, it's very uh, easy to bend the rules. Yeah, but continuing on the facts track, uh, yeah, there's 47.3 million DAUs, uh, which half of it are users age 12 and under. 
this is not a really big critical fact that we're talking yeah, around that's pretty dangerous. like a completely different audience that we are used to deal with within the mobile gaming industry because even though that like common people think that games are targeted mainly at kids and children uh, mobile gaming industry is definitely not the, like the ones that targeting those main targets here we have people that are 18 plus i would say segments if we would cut those and children would of course some games have more of them some game has less but most of the gaming industry is not considered to be children i think the average age of a gamer if we counting mobile in the us is like 37 or something like that and it's a woman mm -hmm. Because there's more more women playing games than ma than men, uh, just by the sheer volume of numbers there. But yeah, Roblox is a really big exception here, where there's like half of the population is 12 and under, which brings with itself a lot of other like legal implications, I would say. Um, yeah, this will be discussed later, but let's continue. Current Roblox market cap is around thirty-eight billion dollars, which uh, we <laughs> the video famously said is <laughs> the value of seven Ubisofts <laughs> on the current market Love trends. It. Love it. Seven Ubisofts is always a, a great comparison. <laughs> so it, it's pretty big, <laughs> and as I said, it's it's pretty much topping all the ch grossing charts on all the mobile uh, stores for now at least the ones that you can see in all the alternative data analytics platforms such as Epony or Sensor Tower. So yeah, it's it's getting there. And then uh, the other important fact is that how Roblox uh, takes a cut out of its, let's say, developers. Because usually the model here, uh, I not only on the PC, but also on mobile market is the 30%. Steam takes 30% out of the developers or the transactions happening on its platform. Apple and Google, uh, they do the same. Epic. Uh, yeah, they have 15% on the you know first million. And yeah, the, yeah. That, that, but it's still afterwards, it's 30%. That's right. Epic uh, squeezed it to 12% uh, together with Microsoft Store. Uh, and they're pretty much doing their best to try to force Steam into the same uh, ratio uh, with their aggressive politics of giving exclus uh, free games every week. So that's there. And Roblox, on the other hand, has 75.5% cut. Love it. <laughs> Man, that is amazing if you're Roblox. Yeah, but it's <laughs> worth it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the first interesting fact. The other thing is that uh, this doesn't uh, even scratch the iceberg of the whole thing because Roblox operates on its own internal currency called Robux. So even like I imagine, for instance, that Apple would pay you in Apple coins. Like it, this is not happening. Apple Apple sends you a check uh, in in US dollars as they yeah. like flow through their platform. But Roblox uh, they do it differently in a way that when you're dealing with revenue or let's say money within their platform it's always in robux only when it leaves the platform after all of these cuts then it, it's converts converted to dollars so the <laughs> genius invention is that in order to withdraw the money out of the platform you would need to go at least 100k which is equivalent of thousand us dollars to actually even be able to withdraw the thing Plus, on top of it, you still need to be on Roblox monthly subscription program on that same account. So it's exactly what ad networks do. If you don't earn, usually it's like 800 or 1,000 a month, then they keep that money for you until you yeah. get over that. Ah. That's great. Another comparison to get like an industry benchmark. Uh, some older people maybe remember Second Life. Uh, older people. <laughs> That, oh, that they okay. had, uh, they had also their dollar-packed economy uh, called Linden, and the minimum withdrawal amount was like a, a ten-dollar alternative there, just to get the scale of like how, how big the rule is here. Uh, the other thing is that if you look at Roblox uh, uh, quarterly reports. They say that on every one dollar of revenue that they're making, uh, only 17 percent, so 17 cents, leaves the Roblox platform altogether. 
So they're keeping almost all the money yeah. in inside the, the platform. Yeah, and uh, can you buy stuff in the platform with these Robux? Of course, you can even spend them on the UA. Ooh. <laughs> yep, we'll get there. Exactly. <laughs> so the important part is that if you are an aspiring developer, uh, like Roblox one, you pretty much need to constantly deal with stuff that's in Robux. And now, even if you made any money, uh, you you know you pretty much don't know what to do with them because you cannot do like you cannot withdraw them if you don't breach this threshold. So you spend it on the platform, and that's how they're pretty much keeping all of the money in it. So even if you if you do it, it's kind of get uh, devalued a lot because then there's the cut. So even if you withdraw it, then we're talking about that big cut. That's the one that's taking off the payment. And this has a really similar historic uh, parallel to the company money that was prevalent in America before 1930s, where it was a normal occurrence where in like logger scam or miner scam, companies would issue their own currency that they would pay their workers in. And then these workers could uh, use this currency within the company shops, pretty much keeping the flow of money within the company. If they speak against the company or, you know, was doing anything that was not in the best manner of the company, they would be fired, thus losing pretty much all their money because it was within the company. And uh, this can make them much more dependent on the whole thing. So it's the definition of how to like do a platform mono monopoly and this got uh, illegal uh, this got illegal by law in 1938 in the US but of course the legislation didn't catch up to the digital space so now it's completely legal on a platform that has half of its user base 12 under yep how <laughs> I'm a bit, I'm a bit, I'm a bit speechless. Yeah, like I don't know what to say about that. Well, I would say they're just uh, really clever, money making <laughs> money-making machine, and pretty clever. How, yeah, how do you feel exactly. if this would be happening on Apple or Google platform? That you would be pay, get paid in like Google currency or stuff like that? So the only reason they're getting away with this is because it's mainly miners who don't yet know any better, right? Mm. Hard to say. Hard to say. <laughs> the other thing is that they are, you know, they are the monopoly on their platform. So, what what do you do? Yeah, they can do whatever they they want. Yeah. Easy as that. So easy as that, but it's super clever. I mean, look. But clever in an evil, evil way, shit. right? It's not clever. <laughs> it's clever evil way. Like, yeah. Ah, uh, well, you can call it whatever you like. It's still. Yeah, I was Genius. I was really surprised about this because I guess if if this would be happening on some kind of a let's say big store like imagine Epic would be doing this or Apple or any other big company that's pretty much a platform operator or Uber like Uber we will be paying you in Uber coins like do you think this would it would it's illegal basically but within the Roblox space it's not being covered by that law or pretty much somebody didn't figure out it's a publicly traded company so people know like we're not talking about some like random new entrant into the top grossing charts it's a company that's like 10 years old and is already on the stock market so everybody knows well, how this works don't you think they uh, have this covered in terms of the legal they're a publicly traded company so they mm, of course they have it covered with legal that is why it is working but uh, yeah. have there been any lawsuits no I don't think so I don't think so. Not definitely not. Uh but you know something being illegal uh doesn't mean that it could not be made illegal in few you know political terms. Uh yeah, that's Mr. Skeptic again in in here. I mean, look, they're not making money now and they don't you know, they don't care about what can ha potentially happen can not that it's going to happen in the future. It can happen sometimes in the future. Until then, everything is fine. Yeah, the, the other thing that's kind of sad uh, to me when I was like looking at the video was that they have the system really good. They, they have set it up really good in a way that you can make games pretty smoothly, like pretty much frictionless. You don't know any coding, nothing. Literally, children children can do easily, those. Yeah, easily. And uh, some of those, of course, like they stay there and become the 
the Roblox developer team. But the knowledge from the Roblox editor isn't that transferable like the one when you would be like pretty much learning some kind of conventional industry engine such as Unity or Unreal or stuff like that. Because if you pretty much base all your knowledge on this Roblox editor, then when you leave the platform, your skills are gone. So, well, in that case, you you don't really leave the platform. <laughs> you don't really there, need there to leave go. the platform. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Another interesting tidbit was that uh, they had this claim called uh, "Make Serious Cash" on their website, and after Ooh. the video was posted on YouTube, they removed it. Surprisingly. <laughs> Well, I guess they made already pretty serious cash. <laughs> like we made serious <laughs> cash. Yeah, we made. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, you have the typo there. Uh, you wanted to say you make serious cash, not the other developers. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, there's this other interesting tidbit that the uh, forums, the official ones, shut down in 2017 because they weren't able to moderate it properly. I guess because again, all of those legal implications with miners. So that's there. Uh, Last interesting like fact is the Roblox collectible market, uh, which is currently really booming because there's a lot of tie-in with real-world brands there, such as like I don't know Vans or NFL or I think well, we all Gucci, see like yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Ralph Lauren as well. They opened the village there uh, in uh, in the mountains uh, <laughs> with uh, Ra- Ralph Lauren. <laughs> Uh, brand, it's that's that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's it's amazing. Really uh, Roblox is also like on the frontier of the whole metaverse hype and considered to be one of go. the like main competitors in the current race. Yeah, you can still see the you know concerts there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So this this leads us to the other thing, which is Roblox collectible market, where there are collectibles that are kind of platform wide, so you can wear them into any of these experiences pretty much that's your cosmetic Ooh. market do you mean games yeah and then th- <laughs> the thing is that uh <laughs> they sold them of course in limited amounts throughout these promotions or like game events stuff like that that's normal but the problem is that the platform is now so massive and uh yeah the whole market is pretty much so massive there some of these literally skyrockets to values like ten thousand fifteen thousand dollars and <laughs> no, that's equivalent of Roblox. <laughs> yeah, and Roblox still takes a thirty percent cut from all of the transfers o- on on the marketplace. <laughs> so comparing it to something like OpenSea, uh, which is the NFT marketplace, which take two point five percent, they take thirty percent, and we're still talking about a uh, game population of twelve and under, which is fifty percent that are now dealing with things that are pretty much having insane value, uh, really, at some point. Well, l- learning the ropes, <laughs> how to how to make money and what to do with them. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Like, well, I can, yeah, I, I can answer that question in 10, 10 years or 12 years uh, <laughs> when uh, she's, uh, you know, programming on Roblox some games. Uh, because Hard to say. I mean, yeah, it's definitely not what I would expect from my daughter to do and uh, try to buy Gucci stuff in, in Roblox for 10K. Yeah, it, so if, if, again, people remember legends. just by the history of mobile gaming industry in, I think, 2012 or somewhere there, there was this big crackdown in Japan on the gacha games where pretty much they had by law to implement some of the controls on spending there and also prohibit some of the gacha designs such as Kompu Gacha and similar ones that the government pretty much banned out already legal. Just saying that this... Uh, also, also remember the thing where Chinese government pretty much said that you need to display the percentage of chances of all the gacha or lottery-based yep. mechanics in your games. Which I think also follow into our Western guidelines that Apple kind of uh, have in their uh, term sheet. So I guess it's more of a question that the regulation didn't catch up with Roblox yet, but I'm guessing it will at some point. Because even in Japan, I think it was because of the scandals that happened there or some kind of outrage by parents when the government stepped in and kind of started to regulate these. So I'm guessing something similar will happen here also. 
No, we'll see. Because again, the other interesting fact is that Roblox platform has a really big problem with discoverability, meaning that you are pretty much uh, offered to pay the Robux uh, currency to like do UA and like user acquisition on your game. And now uh, the platform is already in a stage where your average kid developer is competing with literally dozens strongman teams making games with full VC funding companies on just Roblox platform. Yeah, but you need to find uh, the way how to uh, make your game discover discoverable. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, this is so hard. <laughs> so hard work. Uh, but uh, you need to make a viral hit in order to make uh, the game um, to be available to all the under 12. You know, but with viral hits, the same sa same rule as, as with hyper casual. Like viral hit, that's great, but you're going to get copied in, you know, three days by a company oh, yeah, sure, that actually course. have the manpower and then pump, pump it up through UA. The same as happening in hyper casual. Well, uh, how can you even comment on the UA? You have no no information about the UA of the Roblox. Nobody has in in this in this group. Well, I am starting to uh, not yet, but I will probably next week or the week after. So uh, I'm in the, in the talks with uh, with someone to actually do it. So I can yeah I can answer that question. I, what I know is the auction is definitely way different from what we see on Facebook and Google. And uh, and targeting as well, you can have us uh, like small banners um, that you can see on uh, Google AdWords on webs. So it's like a skyscraper type of um, the banner. And uh, and also the main thing that is uh, out there uh, is the icon, which you need to you know A/B test. And that's like that's it. You have to <laughs> no no <laughs> dude. This is Roblox and it's. Like Facebook 2013, maybe really. So it's getting getting there, but <laughs> because it's very, a store very within a store. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Yep. But well, we'll see. Yeah, I will. I I will let you know. Cup Robux. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I still I still don't know like I'm not convinced that this whole thing will kind of last through regulatory regulatory storm that I guess is brewing on it because it when do you think that ha that's going to happen uh, what's the problem <laughs> <laughs> Sure, but the DAUs of Roblox is way, way different than the, the Ubisoft as well. So, you know, it evens out a bit. Well, and any other um, skepticism around the, the money-making machine called Roblox? No, not the skepticism. It's pretty much, you know, reading through the facts here. But like, yeah. Yeah, like but, you know, like... Have to, like, uh, leave it to them that, like, they make a really made a really successful company and, like, a successful gaming platform, even though it's uh, a store within a store, that I will keep that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, again, but again, the question know. would be, would it be so successful if it would be, let's say, PC browser-based only? Most probably, not that much. Yeah. Well, the inventory, again, as we said, is shrinking on, on the web. You know, they, they had to find a workaround on the mobile, which I I see they did. <laughs> yeah, with so. the experiences thing, they did. <laughs> oh, with the experiences, of course. I mean, oh, look. You know, like, the thing is, we can't uh, we can't say anything, uh, like, from the experience, uh, or, like, building the game on Roblox, because we can't, we, well, we don't have any experiences with that. So that's the, that's the main part that, you know, you are all, all only stating the facts, but then if we had someone actually uh, here talking about how they can build uh, the game there, we would be having probably a very different discussion. No, of course, like I can guarantee that. Uh. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. If that's gonna happen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we have anything else, or we just go for a weekend and uh, and have fun? Yay! 
Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, thank you very much, uh, listeners, as well. So please share feedback. I already got some, and uh, it was mostly positive, which, uh, <laughs> which was surprising. But that's uh, it's good. Keep them coming. And uh, I will speak to you next week. Thanks, guys. Yep. Bye-bye. I need to go uh, for a delivery man because uh, my wife just texted me. So give me a sec. Give me a sec. Commercial break. <laughs> Commercial break. <laughs> and a short message from our sponsor. That's really interesting. I, I talk about this. I think I saw it sometimes uh, from the Game Cam conference. The Google guy was promoting it, but it seems shit. It is horrible. No.